In this video, we're going to learn how to get this beautiful sketch and ink effect using the difference blend mode in Photoshop. We're going to have a lot of fun and this is super easy, guys. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to follow along using this photo, make sure to download this using the links in the description below. Now the first thing that you need to keep in mind once you have imported your photo is that you convert that into a black and white image. Now this is already black and white. If it's not black and white, here's what you need to do. You need to go to image, adjustments and then click on desaturate. All it does is that it takes away all the colors from your photo. As the name suggests, desaturate takes away all the saturation. Now, make a copy of the background layer. Actually, make two copies of the background layer. Press and hold controller command and press J twice. Controller command J, controller command J. Now, this gives you two copies. Change the blend mode of the topmost layer to difference. Now, as you can see, it becomes completely black. And as we talked about this in our previous tutorial about the difference blend mode where we talked about it in depth. If you have not watched it, watch it right here. In that we talked about if we have two layers completely aligned, it turns completely dark. It becomes black. And whenever that alignment is broken, it shows up. Now, let me show you what I mean. If I go ahead and if I try to move it, even just a little bit, it shows up. If I move it a too much, or obviously it will show up, but even if I move it just a little, it shows up, right? And when it's completely aligned, it turns black again. You see, we can take advantage of this. How? If I go ahead, press controller command T, or directly use the arrow keys to move it, just like that, a little bit to the right, just one time arrow key, as you can see, these strokes are formed. Now these strokes are formed where it is disaligning at the line of disalignment. And we can use these strokes to get that sketch effect, right? Now these strokes are just for vertical lines mostly because we moved it towards the right. So the disalignment is created more with vertical lines. We also want details in horizontal lines. To do that, we need to move it in all four directions. So all you need to do is this. So once we have done it, so once you make a copy, and change the blend mode to difference, say move it to the right. Okay, done. Now turn this layer off, come back to layer 1. Again make a copy and this time we need to move it to the left. See, when you have it moved in all four directions, you will have a thicker, better and more prominent edge. So for this one, change the blend mode first to difference and then take it to the left. Use the left arrow key, but be careful. Watch what happens when I press the left arrow key. It just kind of looks strange. Why? Because the blend mode changed. This was selected. So make sure you are in difference. Click here twice to just deselect that and then move it to the left. Done. Turn it off. Come back to this one. Controller command J. Change it to difference. Double click in here. Up. Turn it off, come back to this one, controller command J, change it to difference, get it down. Before you do that, click here. Now, now it's fine. Now we have all the four layers. All you have to do, turn them back on. Turn all of them back on. Now, create a solid color adjustment layer between layer one and all the other layers. So select the layer one and click on this gray white circular icon, click on that and select solid color. Now choose black. Now we have all the strokes and everything looking fine. Right. Create a new layer and take this new layer above every other layer. Okay. And press Control, Alt, Shift and E. Now this will create a merged layer, right? Whatever we are looking, it looks perfect to us. We want to merge it. It's in, it's using a lot of blend modes, a lot of layers. We want one layer with everything in it as we see it. To achieve that, we need to create what? A merged layer. To create a merged layer, simple. Control, Alt, Shift and E. Make an empty layer, then Control, Alt, Shift and E. If you're using a Mac, it's Command, Option, Shift and E. Now, we have what we want, but it's kind of opposite. We wanted the strokes to be black and everything else to be white. So to do that, 
It's pretty simple. Press controller command I, where I stands for invert. So whatever is black will become white. Whatever is white will become black. So controller command I. Yeah, it's looking okay, but you know, it's very light. How do I get it dark? Here's how. Create a copy of it, Control command J, layer 2 copy, and change the blend mode to multiply. Remember from our previous video, multiply is a blend mode which darkens stuff. Screen lightens, multiply, darkens. Now, we select multiply. Now it's getting better. Make a copy of it, Control command J. Much better, make one more. Now it's looking fine. Now we can merge them all. Press and hold shift. Just come down, select layer 2 and this selects all of them. Shift was held. I clicked on this one. Shift was held and I clicked on this one. So in series, all of them got selected. Now I will press controller command E to merge them all into one. Now I have the strokes. Okay. Now I have all the strokes that I need for the sketch to be done. I need now the shading. But before we get into shading, we need to organize this a little bit. This looks like a mess. Here's what you need to do. Select the layer which is just below the final layer and then go to the black color fill. Press and hold shift and click on it and just throw it. We don't need it anymore. So we have three layers, the background layer, layer one and this final layer. Now we want something to fill the shade. What should we fill it with? The original layer, wouldn't it be nice? So now if you go to this one, change the blend mode to multiply, guess what will happen? Only the strokes will show up, not the white stuff. Only the strokes will show up over the original image. So if you go ahead, change the blend mode to multiply, as multiply deletes everything which is 100% white. So change it to multiply. We have strokes over the original image. Have a look. So this is the before, this is the after. That's also a nice effect to have by the way. Now. We need to either erase parts of the photo or paint parts of the photo, which means parts of this layer to create the shading effect. Now this is the fill, this is the stroke. And since there also will be places where areas will delete it, we need to create a blank space for that, right? So an apt space would be white color. So let's go ahead and create a solid color, white and place it just above the background layer and just beneath layer 1. Now let's apply to the fill layer some blend if effects. But before we do any of that, let's just name it fill first, okay? Before we do any of that, make sure you convert this into a smart object. Why? So that we later have the ability, no matter whatever filters we apply, we have the ability to go back and change the values if we had to. Okay? So to do that, go to filter, convert for smart filters. Click OK. Also what you can do, you can right click on it and go to convert to smart object. It's the same thing. Now, double click on the right hand side of the layer. This will open up the layer styles dialog box. In the layer styles dialog box, take the slider of this layer from the right to left, just like that. As you can see, the highlights of this layer and quite literally this layer is becoming invisible as I take the slider from the left to right. Okay, and what can we see through it? The white solid color fill. So up until this point, this looks fine. And if you want to make it smooth, all you have to do, you know that, press and hold alter option, click on it and make it kind of smooth, just like that. Now, you don't want to make it too smooth because this is a sketch and you have to be a little harsh here. Okay, now let's apply some other effects like brush strokes and other fun stuff. To do that, go to filter, filter gallery. Now in filter gallery, you got loads of effects. Let's zoom out. So let's delete the older effects. We cannot delete if there's just one. If there are many, we can delete and we can change it. Here's how to do that. Go to artistic, maybe dry brush or whatever you want. I'll choose brush strokes and go to angle strokes. As you can see, this looks pretty nice and you can even stack different effects. So let's create a new effect. Click on this, creates a new effect layer. Let's go to the bottom layer and change it to say splatter. It kind of gives you a nice effect. So if I go ahead and choose splatter, very nice effect. Click OK once you're satisfied. Now it will take a while to apply that filter. And since this is a smart object, it can take more time. But as you can see, it has done it now. 
If I zoom in, you can see the effect fairly nicely, but it still doesn't look that real. Here's how to make it more nicer. <laughs> Create a negative mask of it and then paint in the areas. To do that, press and hold Ultra option and click on that mask button. Everything is gone. Now you have to paint. You have to paint. So take the brush. This completely depends on your artistry, your skills and gives you a complete control. Make the brush a little bigger, a little harder and just start painting just like that. Just like watercolor. Just like this. So let's zoom in and let's decrease the flow to somewhere around 20-ish and start painting. Just like that. Maybe I would go to 5. And just like a brush, just like a pencil, just start painting like that. And this can take a while, but it gives you fantastic results. I would go to 10 and just paint in areas which are supposed to be dark. Just like that. Now, as you can see, this can take a while. This can take a lot of time. It took me an hour or so to do that. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the complete process, but uh, here's how you do it. I explained it to you. Here's how to do it. So as you begin to do that, it's completely upon you. It's totally upon how you make what you make, right? So every result is going to be different because it totally depends on how you move your hands. Let me quickly show you the eyes and then we'll skip to the next step, okay? Because this will take a lot of time and we'll skip. But eyes are important, so let me show that to you how to do eyes. So increase the flow somewhere around that. And in eyes, make sure you leave the highlights. When you, once you paint the eyes, leave some highlights. Just, like, just paint it just like a pencil or maybe brush, something like that. So, and you don't want it to look so natural that it looks real. So just like that, you do the other eye. And you can, if you're using a tablet, that's better than good. But if you're not using a tablet, that shouldn't be an excuse for you. Okay, just like that looks really like a pencil, just like this. And you can even erase stuff. So to erase stuff, if you have painted something extra, all you have to do, press X to toggle between black and white. And if the foreground color and the background color is not black and white, press D to reset the swatches and then press X. Now, with black, when you paint, it just erases stuff, just like that, okay? So that's how you do it. Now, let's skip to the next step. So there we go, fast forward one hour and we have this. Here we have the same things. So we have the sketch layer, we have the fill layer, I didn't name it fill, just name it fill. And we have the background layer. Now, I have applied some smart filters in the fill layer, as you can already see, the filter gallery, the artistic strokes and say splatter. So it's all there, it's all the same. Now. If you want to add some other effects, you want to make it more pumped up and so all you need to do, create a levels adjustment layer, okay, punchy, take it from the right to left just like that and take it from the left to right to make it a little more darker. Now, now this is looking fine, but the darks are not so dark and the brights are not so bright since it's paper. So here's what you need to do, take this ladder from the left to right, this will make the dark areas brighter. If you do that, just like that. And this will make the light areas darker. Just like that. Now this looks like a sketch. Now from the sketch layer, I kind of hate the details in the nose. So let's go ahead and delete that. So if we have the sketch layer selected and then create a mask, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black. And now let's go ahead and delete this area. Just like decrease the flow to around 10-ish. And just let's just like using an eraser and there we go now it's looking fine now you can add a paper effect to it all you have to do import an image of a paper as simple as that so I'll use this plugin called Pexels and I'll just type in paper and it's still loading yeah it allows you to search and download free stock photos from inside of Photoshop so make sure to download that now let's type paper let's see what turns up this one I had already used it click on it and all you have to do, wait for it to load. Now it downloads and imports it right there. If you have it saved somewhere in the computer, if you have downloaded it from the internet or bought it somewhere, you can always go to File and Place Embedded and then locate it and it will already import it in your image as a layer. 
as you can see the image has finally been imported so let's just collapse it and now let's control command T and just resize that just make it just like this okay and let's change the blend mode to say multiply first first change the blend mode to multiply now when you change the blend mode to multiply we want the light areas to show up so double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left just like that doesn't look right right because we want the light areas of the paper layer to show up so this layer not the underlying layer this layer just like that ah uh, it looks good just like it okay now we want the light areas of the paper layer to shine here's what you need to do make a copy of this controller command J and this time change the blend mode to screen because screen is a blend mode which makes things lighter now let's get back to this one double click on the right hand side of the layer to layer style and do just the opposite just the opposite this time take it from the left to give it the shine it wants just like that just a little bit how about trying overlay I was just thinking let's try overlay yeah it looks much better now it's taking away the details from the face and it's disrupting the face we didn't want that to happen make a group of both of these controller command G when you select both of them so controller command hold that and select both of them then press controller command G now create a mask take the brush make sure the foreground color is black and then slowly paint over the face we don't want much of a disruption just like that you don't want it to look obvious that we did it so go ahead and press X switch to white and paint back in some areas just like that and erase some other areas outside the face too you don't want it to look obvious okay now this looks pretty much fine so let's go ahead and add some more here just like that and now if you want to add more effects you can add color lookup on top of this one and I would choose say Chris Bourne there we go the old Sherlock Holmes effect before after and that's pretty much it so this was a little intricate fun little longer but interesting process but the fundamental concept was this using difference to create strokes Here's how it works. When everything is aligned, it turns black. Whenever the alignment breaks, the place where the alignment breaks the most, it shows lines. And we can use that lines to create strokes. I hope this video helped and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.